Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about arrays and how we can use them in Construct 3. Now, the one thing I would like to tell you guys ahead of time is there's various ways you can accomplish this in Construct 3. I am going to cover it in a way where you do not need to pay for the, some of the additional features that makes your life a little bit easier when dealing with arrays and things of that nature. All right. So first things first, what is an array? I always kind of like to keep this very general at the moment as we kind of dive in, but just think of it as a bunch of storage bins. And each bin, it could hold something. And you could have as many bins you want and in, in many rows and columns and things of that nature. And based on what you put in it, that's what type of data it holds, all right? So in this case, we're talking about like string values, numbers, it could hold objects, uh, it could hold all sorts of cool things. However, we're going to focus on some of the easier parts, which is strings and numbers. So uh, let's get started. So in this one, I, I created this uh, little piece here. And all it does is go to a brand new page because I'm going to just talk about doing arrays in this layout. So you can just have a layout open, ready to go. And what we're going to do is put in our very first array. So I'm just going to double click and then array will pop up. And I'm just going to call this my first array and click insert. Now an array is available. So now I can fill in some information. All right. So now I'm going to do is go to my event sheet and let's go ahead and just fill some data into here. Now it's very important that you guys kind of uh, make arrays in that and understand how it actually works within constructs. So first things first, in system, we're going to put all this under on start of layout. So this is going to do our initialization of sorts. Okay. So we're going to add an action, and I'm going to click my first array, and now you're going to get a bunch of options. Okay. What we're going to do is, if you click on here. Um, in the array section set at x that means it's one dimensional set at x y means it's two dimensional set at x y z and it's three ideally we're probably just going to work with either two dimensional or one dimensional based arrays i'm going to start with the one dimensional array and go ahead and click on that so now it's going to say okay what is the value and the position of it okay so I'm going to go ahead and just say that we're going to hold strings into this. So uh, I'm going to put I am in the first position. All right, in quotes, and then you hit done. And it's very important to know that when we're playing with a race, it starts from zero, not at one. So it goes from zero to the number. So if we're making an array of five things, it'll go from zero to four. OK. Uh, super important to know uh, as you kind of dive in deeper for that piece. Now, if we just leave this as is, well, I'm going to show you how you can kind of verify what's actually going on uh, when your values are getting set. So instead of hitting the play button like we normally do, you can go to the drop down and we're going to pick debug layout. This is really cool because it gives you the ability to check out what's going on in your game and track some of the background computer usage and all that fun stuff. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on my first array. And when you click on that, you're going to see this pop up. And I'm going to make this a little larger so we could focus more on that right now. And see where it starts with 0 and goes to 9? Well, I didn't set anything to say how large this array is. So by default, it will be 10. And right here, say the width is 10. Think of that as x, OK? And so this is going to say, hey, there's 10 buckets, right? And when I said set zero, it put whatever I wanted into the zero bucket, OK? So what we're going to do is go back and go ahead and just add some more pieces. So I'm going to go click here, my first array, set at x. We're going to do one. And I'm going to set this as. I am in the second position. Okay. And then I'm going to do two more. 
and I'm just gonna copy paste this just to make it a little bit faster and then third position and then this one will be my fourth position okay fourth position all right so now that we have some things in our array let's take a look at our debug and see what's going on so now i click on my first array and i'm starting to fill this in to hold data okay and uh i'm not going to do the rest but now i'm going to show you how you can retrieve it and show it on the screen so i'm going to go ahead and click out of this and i'm going to go into my layout and we're going to make some text and some spaces to add some stuff okay so this part here, we're going to just call this um, array first text. And let's just do this. This is where, well, actually, we should just keep it blank for right now. Uh, placeholder first position. Let's do that. And then let me make the it slightly larger so we could see this slightly maybe a lot larger first position maybe we'll have to do something like this because we'll make sure all of them fit so now we're going to go back to text again and i'm going to say second position what did i call this array second text And then we'll put second position and I'm going to make this larger and have it go here. There we go. And then we'll do array third text. Do that here. Third position. We're going to make this a 48. We're going to make it long enough here. Oh, look. Already messed up. Let's see. All right. Probably not that important to change that, but it is what it is. Um, and then we're going to make one more. Let's go here. Array fourth text. And fourth position, and then do that. All right, cool. Now we have some fields that we could play with and show. So, right now, if I hit play, all it's doing is showing the default value. But what we're going to do is go back into the event sheet itself, and now we're going to fill it in so we set all these as values so i'm just going to keep this in here for right now just to show you how we could then go ahead and then make values show up so we're going to hit add action and then i'm going to pick array first text and we're going to do set text and instead of the quotes we're going to call it whatever your array is called so i'm going to call it my first array and then you hit the period and you're going to get a bunch of options we want at and then you're going to open your parentheses. You'll get something that pops up and it says, oh, you need the index. Since this is one dimension, we don't need to do like a zero comma zero or anything like that. We're going to just focus on just one number. So our first array is located at index value zero. And so we're going to do that. Close that up. Hit done. And now if we hit play, the value changed and it got moved into whatever value you want to show up on your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the next set. And I'm going to go to second array, set the text. We're going to call it my first array dot at, and we just set it to one. We're going to do this for the third one. And then we're going to just say my first array dot at, and we're going to call this two. There we go. And then we have our fourth one. We're going to hit set text. And then we're going to do my first array again, dot at. And we are going to do a three. There we go. Once you do all that, you should hit it. It should all have 
text filled in based on what was in that location. All right. So what I'm going to do is run this in debug. And now let's take a look at my first array and see this is what's located here. And that's what's getting populated in each one of those spots. OK, so this is how you can slowly start getting uh, data saved and being able to show it on the screen in Construct 3.